Hey, what's up guys? Ashley, Media Glitch, back here again. Look at us back on the couch. Very nice. We'll come back every now and then. Got my yeah. friend Malik Daniels here with me. How are How's you today, doing? sir? I'm doing well. Doing, doing well. well. Well, today we are talking about and reviewing the show, Netflix original, Making a Murderer. Yeah, Cody apparently has actually seen it in spite of the intro that was done earlier. Anyway, creepy poster. It is. It's so weird. Okay, so this is actually a 10-part series. So it's a documentary. It's, it's all like... Um, on the scene shot footage, it's real footage, documentary, but it's actually t like presented, I guess, if you will, over 10 episodes. So it's not your typical just like one hour. True crime, it's actually more go. like a like serial. Yeah. Where you're there from the beginning and you work your way all the way to the end. Yeah, exactly. Yep. So it's long, it's like 10 hours long. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, I don't know if you can tell, but my throat is a little, little scratchy today. Right. So I'm gonna try to make it through this. Um, but let, hey, you know, too much screaming at the concerts, what? Uh, anyway, so let me tell you a little bit about what this documentary is about. And it's really kind of hard to describe in a short version, I guess, because there's so many details to this thing. So basically it's about this guy, Stephen Avery. He was arrested in 1985 for a sexual assault, <clears throat> convicted, sent to prison for an X amount of time. Um, it turns out that this dude actually was exonerated 18 years later. He sat in prison for 18 years for a crime that he didn't do, was later released on DNA evidence mm -hmm. that exonerated him that um, basically pointed to this other guy. So dude sits in prison for 18 years and then he gets out in 2003. Super happy to be out, like um, ready to just live his life, right? Get back to what was happening. Mm -hmm. And so, well obviously, like anyone would do after being wrongfully accused and sitting in prison for 18 years, what do you do? He looks for... Um Restitution. Yeah, like, essentially, yeah. Yeah, like you, you sue these people, right? You sue the state. What are you laughing at, Joel? Shut your mouth. You guys are awesome. Keep going. All I'm right, laughing. thanks, buddy. Uh, he sues. He sues the Manitowoc Sheriff's Department, right? This takes place in, in Wisconsin. Um, so, in the middle of this suit, thirty-six million dollar suit, right? Mm -hmm. um, the state's not going to pay it, so it's basically up to the Manitowoc Sheriffs to pay it. Which, I mean, they're not going to do that. So, um, conveniently. Conveniently he gets arrested for murder, mm -hmm. right in the middle of the suit. Two years after being released from serving a wrongful imprisonment of 18 years. And, um, which, and which no one is at fault and no blame is given. Yeah. And is murder? No, this is, is so the first one is a sexual assault. Okay. This one is a murder of um, who you see here, Teresa Halbuck. So she is an auto trader photographer, goes out to Steven's property to take pictures of a van that he's selling. And then she goes missing. And then she goes missing. Is this uh, spoiler alert stuff? No, no, no. Nope. This is, this this is, is, all, this is yeah. all true fact. This is all, it's everywhere. So it's not spoiler. We're not going to give you the big details. I didn't know. If you want to watch the series. Shut up, Joel. I'm just saying. <laughs> um, so basically, so the series really, the meat of the series is us going through trial, through this murder trial with Stephen Avery, right? We go... We sit in in all the defense meetings. We hear the phone calls from prison. Um, we are there with his family. Like these ladies moved to Wisconsin to film all this stuff. So they are there for everything as it unfolds. I mean, it's really, really impressive the amount of footage that was gathered and put together to complete this series. So I completely understand why it took so long before we saw it. What I think makes it um, really intense, but also um, really engaging is the fact that they're there for phone conversations as mm -hmm. they happen there and, mm -hmm. and they're able to get the actual reaction of the person right after they've had the phone yeah. call where they can say okay well this just happened and she's upset and and now he's gone here and and you're able to actually follow every step yeah. but the other thing is that it moves so quickly even though it's 10 hours I mean like those those cliffhangers every episode oh man it they just end. develops really 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 fast yeah, and before you know it crazy. you're moving on to your next episode yeah yeah there's no it's well put together. Like I cannot imagine sifting through ten years of footage in order to complete this documentary and putting it together so well. Yeah, that's the biggest thing. to tell an, a story that is intriguing and awesome. Talk about Brendan Dassey. Ugh, you guys, the saddest part in my opinion. I don't know if Stephen did it. There's not enough evidence in my opinion not to say that he did. <laughs> This is not spoiler. This is not spoiler. I'm not going to tell you what the final conviction was. You can watch it and find out for yourself. Um, I personally don't know if 
he did it. I didn't see enough evidence presented. I will say that this documentary does seem to be very one-sided. It does follow the defense mostly and does try to give you the idea that he is innocent. Whatever, I think that's fine. I think the evidence speaks for itself once you watch this documentary though and you'll see that there's not enough evidence I think to go completely guilty. Um, but I, I will say the saddest part about this whole thing for me is um, Stephen Avery's nephew, who's Brendan Dassey. Um, this kid, 16 years old, basically gets coerced into confessing to the murder of Teresa Halbach, even though he, even, I personally feel, had nothing to do with it. Nothing to do with it. Wasn't he is a uh, prosecutor's uh, patsy in order to yeah. bring a stronger case dirty against Dirty dog, Stephen. that po prosecutor. Dirty, dirty dog. And um, that is kind of like the final, I guess, two episodes are, are more about, about Dassey's case that's mm -hmm. a little bit later, mm -hmm. comes later in the year. Yeah, he gets he goes through trial after Stephen Avery's trial is over, so. Um, and um, it's the saddest part. This kid, he's kind of, he's kind of slow. He's not really smart. Um, he has an IQ of 70, which I heard somewhere that um, Forrest Gump has like an IQ of 75. Okay, so if that tells you anything. And these cops, these investigators are promising him Tell us what we want to know and we'll help you. Tell us what we want to know and we'll help you. The only consistent story that Brandon Dassey told was the true story. He came home from school, he played video games, he answered a couple phone calls, this and this, this. That is the only consistent story. The story that the prosecutors used and that the cops used against Brandon Dassey and Stephen Avery was this crazy murder story of like, and they would literally tell him, you shot her in the head. And he would go, no, and they'd be like, tell, Brendan, that's not to tell the truth, tell okay. the truth. So here's the thing, that the, the, the Dassey story is a good beeline to have to, to balance out the series whenever there's breaks in the Avery story. Yeah. And, it, and it's used throughout, and it's something to build up, and they use it as their, as their way to wrap up uh, the series, which is just <sighs> as compelling. Makes me so sad. And, and, so sad. And it leaves on, on, a, on a fine note. It's not really a fine note, but it's... it's it's, it's haunting, but... Uh, it really is. It's haunting. How it's did you haunting. feel about the show overall? Um, I thought it was well told. I thought it kept me captivated. I wanted to, to know what was coming next. I love that it was all actual footage that they shot. There was no reenactments. There was no acting out anything else um, to show you anything later. Like, it was all just really happening. They were really there getting the footage, getting the phone calls, the audio recordings. It was all just... We were there. We were going through them with it, like while it was all happening like great it's awesome the story itself is sad that's the best i can say like it's really sad it breaks my heart to think that brendan is sitting in jail well that's a spoiler <laughs> for for 50 years you know for something that i don't believe he did so i don't know what do you think i think the truth is that it's a hard series to talk about because um there's so much that happens mm -hmm. and there's so many details and it's literally the kind of show where you can't really walk away yeah because there's subtitles there's there's phone conversations and and it's a whole lot to take in it's still really sad it was still really captivating but be, but just by the alone fact of how i felt afterwards i give it four out of five hot dogs yeah oh me too <laughs> four out of five yeah and i four really very serious hot dogs yeah i right. give it four very serious out of five hot dogs just because it is it is one-sided um, uh, Joel could not watch it because You'll he's a big baby. You'll want to spread this out with comedies throughout the week. Yeah, you got it. No, I think uh, you watch the whole thing all together. So, anyways, guys, thank you so much again for watching uh, Media Glitch, for checking us out. And please go on and check out some more reviews, other things that we've done. See where we're at. Subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe so you can catch up on what's new. Comment below if you saw Making a Murderer. What did you think? Did he do it? Is he innocent? Is he guilty? I don't know. It's hard to say, man. It's hard to say. Malik? There's the so pleasure. much. Yeah, yeah, always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. Do you want to shake hands? I yeah, feel like sure. that was a yeah, shake hand was a, moment. That was definitely a... Wasn't that? Okay. We love you guys. We'll see you next time. Peace.